Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video. So one of the questions that I get very, very often is, hey, I'm just got an STI. I'm looking to add more power. I want to be at this power level. How do I achieve it? Since I have some experience with the EJ motor and Subarus in general, I've been driving them for many, many years, over a decade now. I have a decent amount of experience with modifying them, kind of what power levels you can get with what parts. So what I wanted to go over in this video is the parts and everything needed to achieve 400 horsepower in your STI reliably. Now I wanna preface this video just by saying this, there is a thousand and one ways to go about this. I know many people are saying, hey, I can achieve that power with these parts with that, or I can do it cheaper. You know, there's tons of ways to go about this with the EJ motor and STIs in general. The aftermarket support is absolutely insane. So I get it. There's other components. There's other parts. There's other brands that you can go with to achieve this or possibly even more. But this is just my personal experience and what I did and what I thought was the best way to go about it. You know, this was a daily driver at one point. So my main focus was reliability. I wasn't going for power or anything like that. My main focus was just to put quality parts on the car, make it as reliable as possible, and make sure I don't push it because we all know EJ Motors can be pretty finicky if you start pushing it and you really don't know what you're doing. Now keep in mind, these motors, we all know they are not power horses. You're not gonna be able to throw a tune and downpipe on here and be you know, 800 horsepower. It's just not the way these motors are. It's not for the faint of heart. It is definitely not cheap. You know, the dollar per horsepower in these cars is just not where it's at. <laughs> so if you're looking to make some serious power with not a lot of modifications, this is not for you, I can assure you. It's very, very expensive to make these cars very fast. If you're looking to do five, six, 700 horsepower, you're easily gonna be spending 30, 40, 50 plus grand just on motor build. So I also just wanted to say that before we get into it because I know a lot of people are really like, wow, you only made that for you know that amount of money or you know there's other cars out there that can make way more. Yes, I know, I understand. I know these motors and everything is not the best car in the world, but it's the experience. It's the love of the STI and Subarus in general. There's a huge community behind it and that is one of the reasons why I love these cars so much. I just wanted to get that in the open because I know there's other cars out there. I know a lot of people are gonna comment and mention that other brands and other motors that are better. You're certainly right, but today in this video, we're going to be talking about the EJ motor. Now, I went through a few different power setups in this STI, obviously stock, getting the car completely new from the factory, from the dealer, you know, is at the 305 horsepower that they claim. And it drove like that for a while. Then I went to stage one, the cob off the shelf map. Then I went to stage one plus and went with Brent tuning. Basically, it's just a tune and an intake. And then I kind of moved up to stage three is basically what they call it these days. And what stage three basically is these days is a downpipe with all the fueling upgrade. And with the stage three setup, with everything that I was running, all the components, uh, I was at 340 horsepower or 352 foot pounds of torque, 18 PSI, 93 pump. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. But since then, I upgraded the turbo and went to external wastegate. So now with all the components and everything that I have on the car currently, it is at 413 horsepower with 358 foot-pounds of torque on the same gas, 93 pump. And that is where the car is sitting at currently. <laughs> So let's start going over the parts and everything that I did to make this power. So the first five modifications that I'm gonna go over are reliability mods. I recommend doing these simply because these are known issues in the EJ motor. There's aftermarket solutions to fix them and they're things that I think you should run if you're running more power or completely stock. They're all things that are gonna help the overall health of the motor. So I definitely recommend doing them no matter what. First one is the AOS. I recommend the IAG, which is what I'm running. Cylinder 4 cooling mod, I'm running the Getadom Cylinder 4 cooling mod. There's other brands out there, but that one is the best since it uses a metal T-fitting. 
an upgraded radiator of some sort. I'm running the Koyo Rad aluminum radiator. This one's amazing. There's other brands out there as well, but a lot of people go with this one. Also, I recommend upgrading the oil pan, doing the whole oil pan kit. I have the Killer Bee oil pan kit, which includes the pan, the pickup tube, as well as the baffle. Highly recommend since the pickup tube is a known issue and can crack, which causes oil starvation and can make your EJ go boom. So I definitely recommend doing that. It's really not that expensive to do it. The last one, number five, you can go either way. This is something that I consider a reliability mod and the main reason why I did it, and that is equal length headers. Now, another thing that I highly recommend doing is upgrading all of your fuel system. So I am running an AEM340 fuel pump. I'm running the full Cobb fuel kit, so that includes the pressure regulator, the Cobb fuel lines, the fuel rails, you can kind of see them right there, and also upgraded injectors. These are the Cobb 1050X injectors. Other components in the engine bay that I am running, I'm running a Grimspeed top mount intercooler with the black thermal coating, as well as the Grimspeed uh, silicone hose kit. Right here is a Cobb bypass valve. The stock one is totally fine. It said they could hold pretty decent power, but I just wanted something a little bit better. So I upgraded to the Cobb one since I think that is the nicest and best quality one. I have the really nice Cobb Redline carbon fiber intake. Again, there's other options, but this one's just really nice. And the lower IATs that this thing provides is pretty crazy. So I definitely recommend it. It's a very nice piece. It also is a great performance gain, so I highly recommend it. Something you can't see, I'm running NGK one-step colder plugs as well. Now to control boost, I'm running a Grimspeed electronic boost control solenoid right over here. Now as for the full exhaust, I kind of already went over one piece of it, and that is the Killer Bee equal length headers coated in Swing Tech. Come around here, you can't see it again since it's underneath, but I'm running the PLM turbo up pipe with dump tube, coming up to a Grim Speed catted down pipe. This is the limited version, all the way to an ETS Extreme cat back. You can run pretty much any exhaust that you want. That's the one I just prefer. Now, as for the last few things that make this car really fun and bring it up to 413 horsepower, uh, I upgraded the turbo to a stock location turbo, which is the Blausch 1.5 XTR turbo. And I also went to external wastegate as well. I also have a Cobb wastegate bracket there as well to keep that one closed since we went to external. But the wastegate that I am running is a tile 44 millimeter wastegate. Now the most important part, you can see it right there, which is the Cobb access port. My tune, my professional dyno tune is through the access port. My tuner is from RT Tuning and they were able to achieve 413 horsepower, 358 foot pounds of torque, 18 PSI on my favorite gas, 93 pump. So this car is pretty much a full bolt on. You guys are probably wondering why I didn't go to flex fuel or go to E85. And the main reason is because E85 obviously runs much cooler. It provides more power. And with where the current level is at, going to E85 would push this motor way too far. The only time I would go to flex or go to E85, I would be building the motor and going for way more power. So that is the main reason why I didn't go to E85. Also another reason as well, I don't have any E85 stations close to me, but those are all the hard parts and currently everything that I'm running on this car in terms of performance. And that is what allowed me to break 400 horsepower on my STI. Now, something to keep in mind, this is a 2017. So you guys are probably wondering, oh, he probably upgraded the block, upgraded the internals. I did not. This is stock block, this is stock internals, this is the completely stock motor. I didn't touch it, it's never been pulled. Everything is amazing, I never had any single issues. The dam has never dropped. I never got more than negative 2.8 feedback knock, which is 100% normal. If you ever plugged in a Cobb access port and you monitored the feedback knock on the stock tune from a completely stock STI, you'd be amazed at what the numbers throw. Negative 1.4 to negative 2.8 on any car or any STI is 100% normal. So don't freak out if you ever see that. However, it is very, very rare that I do see it. And there's one thing that I will mention that if you ever get your car tuned and you never see any feedback knock ever, that is a good sign that your tuner is not good and that he turned off the knock sensors because if the tuner ever turns them off you're never going to know that there's a problem you're going to think it never knocks and then before you know it you're going to have some issues so i know a lot of people usually have a hard time in saying hey the dyno is probably wrong and everything but the dyno does not lie we all know if you do have a dynograph showing the actual results it's kind of hard to prove wrong but yes, this 100% feels like that power. There is no doubt about it. This thing is plenty quick. It shocks me every single time I drive it. 
Uh, and sometimes it actually scares the crap out of me just because of how loud it is with the external wastegate. It always catches me off guard and I usually forget just how loud this thing is, but what is an absolute blast. I absolutely love this power level. It truly feels like the power that this car should have came with from the factory. But I will say the most important part about this whole entire thing is your tuner. The tuner can make or break your car it is 100% the main reason as to why I'm at the power level that I'm at. My main goal was reliability. I did not care what power level this landed at. I just wanted it to be safe. I wanted it to be reliable and wherever it landed is where I was happy. And that is the way that you should go about these builds with these cars. Unless you're going for a specific number and you completely rebuild the motor or anything like that, then that's a different story. But if you're just like me, you like to bolt on a few parts, make a little bit more power, uh, this is the way to go about it. You don't want to sit there and be like, oh, I want to hit 500 horsepower, I want to hit 600 horsepower and not do a thing to my motor. It's just not going to happen. You may have some miles under your belt with that setup and it may be a lot of fun, but I assure you, you're going to run into some issues down the line. It is not going to last. Like I said, my main thing was to focus on reliability. I didn't care where it landed. And in fact, I was quite surprised at the final numbers that this thing provided. I was thinking it was going to be sub 400. I didn't even think it was gonna reach over. So to be at 413 was quite the surprise. And I'm only at 18 PSI. All the hard parts and all the components that I'm running have plenty more life left. So I can definitely shoot for more power if I wanted to. But keeping that torque level low, keeping it in the 350 range, keeping the boost levels under 20 PSI is definitely where you want to be at if you want to keep this thing intact and you want to do it correctly. And um, I couldn't be more happy with this setup. It is absolutely amazing. It is a lot of fun. And if you want to go for more power on your 2017 below, you can definitely go this same route. There's a million other parts that you can do, different ways to go about it. But this is the way that I did it. And honestly, I think it is one of the best. It's all high quality parts. It's definitely the way to go and uh, it really, really speaks for itself. Now I will say if you have a 2018 Type RA or 2019 Plus STI with the upgraded internals, you can definitely shoot for a little bit more power. Those things hold up to around 450 or so, no problem. So you can shoot for a little bit more. They can hold a little bit more torque. Now, if I had a 2018 Type RA or I had a 2019 Plus STI with the upgraded internal motor, uh, I would probably shoot for a little bit more power, nothing more crazy than it already is. I'd probably just shoot for a little bit more torque, probably around 380, 390 or so. Uh, in terms of horsepower, like I said, those things could hold around 450, no problem. I've seen them actually shoot for way more. We all seen Bader, we all seen Devin. Those guys can make some pretty decent power on the stock 2019 plus EJ motor with the upgraded internals. Uh, it's pretty amazing what those things could do. But if you want to keep it reliable, if you want to hang on to the motor and you don't want to do any crazy builds or anything like that, you know, obviously there is a limit that you need to stop at, not go too crazy with it. And I think the 450 mark for those motors is where I would be. Now the age old question, how much did it cost to make 413 horsepower on this car with everything that I am running? Grand total, we're looking at around 22,000 bucks that I have spent over the last six years upgrading the motor, getting the power to where it is right now. Like I said, it's not for the faint of heart. It's pretty darn expensive for 413 horsepower. If you spent that kind of money on pretty much any other car or any other modern car or modern motor, you'd be almost a thousand horsepower, probably actually over a thousand horsepower at this point. Um, so like I said, it is very expensive to upgrade these motors and to do it correctly. Uh, you know, there's obviously other ways to go about it, make more power, but do it incorrectly. And then you're gonna have even bigger and more expensive problems if you don't do it right. But the way that I went about it was I didn't really care about the expense of it. I just wanted to focus on building the best and most reliable bolt on EJ motor I possibly could. And I really truly feel like I did that. Again, there's other options out there, but for what I went with and the power levels that I'm at, I couldn't be happier with the overall build and where it currently is. So yeah, guys, there you have it. That is what it takes to make 400 plus horsepower in your EJ motor. Again, there is many ways to go about this, but this is just the way that I went about it. I have built this over the last six years. It has taken me quite some time. I know a lot of people build these faster, but I took my time, saved up for the parts that I wanted, and I didn't sacrifice anything. And I honestly couldn't be happier with how it turned out, how it drives, how it sounds, how it feels. It is truly a uh, one of a kind experience. And I recommend if somebody has the budget or the means or the want to go to 400 plus horsepower in your STI, I couldn't recommend this entire setup enough. Again, my company that helped me build this is RT Tuning. They're fantastic. They are out of Montgomeryville, PA. Amazing shop. 
They know what they're doing. They build many, 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 many Subarus. They do other brands as well. Subarus are a huge part of their business, so they are the place to go if you are in the tri-state area or you wanna travel. I couldn't recommend them enough. They have been fantastic over all the years uh, and have helped me build this STI. So that is gonna wrap up this video. I hope it was insightful. I hope it helped you understand what it takes to get to this power level. If you wanna just go to stage three and just be happy with that, which honestly was a very, very nice setup. I was at 340 horsepower, 352 torque, 18 PSI. It was really, really nice. I was on the stock turbo. It handled everything just fine. And honestly, if you just wanna keep it at the 350 mark, that is more than adequate. It is a lot of fun as well. But I definitely will say being at 413 with the upgraded turbo uh, and the external wastegate and everything is uh, a lot more fun. It's a lot louder and it definitely is a special car. So, but that is gonna do it for this one, guys. If you have any questions about the parts that I am running on my STI or anything else about the car, be sure to leave them in the comments below. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.